Rui, he's our mascot. He's working upstairs, licking people's faces with his dirty mouth. <laughs> He's my baby, Ru -ru. <laughs> He hates it. He's like, come on, get me out of here. Okay. <sighs> All right. It's going to be a long night. My name is Brandon. I'm the chef owner of Mr. Jews in San Francisco Chinatown. I opened Mr. Jews two months ago. It's been pretty crazy. I'm just trying to get better as a team every day, and I'm still refining the vision and the food. I think Chinese American is what I would say best describes us. This needs a little more seasoning. Every day we put up a taster of every single dish that we, we make, and every day there's something to correct. The closer the team understand my taste buds, the more in sync that we are, then the more creative we can be together. It's almost like when ladies have their periods <laughs> together. Sinking is real. I'm also not a doctor, but... <laughs> this is our beef tartare. We put this right into the bowl, and then these little fried anchovies go on top too. I'm mostly Italian trained. Any way I can sneak in some anchovy into my food is always like extra boost of umami. And then crackers that we'd make with barley go on top too. Our desire is to kind of push along Chinese food and the idea of what Chinese American food could be. Giving Chinese food in Chinatown, San Francisco, a, a voice is really like what I come back to all the time. Part of the history of this neighborhood is that it, it's really created a lot of Chinese American food. Chop suey and um, egg foo young, all those things were dishes that attracted other people to this neighborhood. And so I'm using that kind of freedom as well to have the menu expand beyond maybe what other people's idea of what Chinese food is and what it could be. All the sourcing coming from local farms here, so the food is changing according to the season, even just the plating style. I always thought Chinese food is piles. I was trying to get away from having Chinese food just always be mounds of food. So that's our silken tofu dish right there. My original last name got changed because when my grandpa came to the United States, they spelled it as J-E-W. Changing my name back to the actual spelling of what it should have been was in a way saying, I'm also trying to take back Chinese food and do it, do it right, do it justice. All I've been wanting to do is open this fucking Chinese restaurant for so long. I was just like, it's gotta happen. Upstairs right now is a huge banquet space. Last night, I met Tony. Tony's my friend that I've been hanging out with him in Chinatown. He grew up here. And then my sous chef, Sarah. Are we walking? We're gonna walk, yeah. I've never been to Alfred's before. And then we met up with my wife. She gets all the credit for designing the dining room here. People just worship your husband. I know. You're like the big Buddha. People worship you. You just need to gain, you need to gain, a, you need to gain a few pounds, right? I met Tony when I was doing construction in Chinatown. He's like the mayor of Chinatown. I don't know if I'm the mayor of Chinatown. <laughs> After we met up, we walked just a couple blocks down to Alfred's. It's part of Daniel Patterson's group, like their new restaurant. They just renovated this really old school steakhouse and they kept everything almost like the, exactly the same, except like the quality of food is way better now. Let's go through the bar door. It's like entertainment and dining. And that's like super fun. Cool, thanks. What are you gonna I'm gonna get the bijou. bijou. All right. Thank you. Do you get a bijou? I'm gonna get a, a hot water, please. <laughs> Filter hot water. Really? You don't wanna try one of the cocktails? No. Oh, come on, tell them. Have a mocktail? It's like, it yeah, looks like mocktail. a cocktail, but it's oh, not sure, like yeah. a non alcoholic yeah. one. What do you recommend? I'll make you something. Please. Okay. I'll have a 19th century. I was a little worried about what we would all talk about, but. There's always something to talk about with me. This guy. That's why we brought Tony. He's got it. People told me that they were questioning my decision of, of having Tony come along. I knew he would have a lot to say, and he did. 
<laughs> Am I good at ping pong? I'm not good at anything. I'm good at eating. Anything that has to do with sports, I'm not good at. I can't even ride a bike. I can't drive because I'm Chinese. Chinese people shouldn't drive. How's your mocktail? This is okay. I mean, this is good, yeah. So we went there for a drink, had some really delicious oysters. This is Rockefeller? Oh, that's good. This is good. That's super good. Let's do it. Thank you very much. After that, we headed over to Lord Stanley. Whoa, this is a serious van. It smells like barbecue in here. Dude, this thing looks like a paddy wagon. I feel like a bunch of criminals in here. Hey, Yut Lee, that's where everybody goes. Yeah, Yut Lee. We used to go there like all the time. It's kind of overpriced though, yeah? For no. what it is. But it looks no. so good. No, no way. So? How can that place be overpriced? No. Oh, you go in there. My bill's always high over there. Really? Yeah. Well, stop ordering so much food. Well, I, you know, I'm always hungry. They've been holding down the block for a long time. Rupert and Carrie, they're a husband and wife team that opened Lord Stanley. Hey, how are you? When we arrived there, we had some champagne and then we had a couple bites. Let's get the onion petals and the chicken wings, the beignets. Should we get something else? That sounds good. Hey, brother. Hi. How are you? I'm well. How are you? No, uh, you know. Hang it in. <laughs> but it's a very comfortable restaurant. It's a pretty laid back atmosphere. It's definitely sort of inclinations towards fine dining in some aspects. In the same sense, the food is, is quite simple, but we take great care in what we're doing and to make sure that each step is done properly. I miss butter. I miss butter and cheese. Oh, that's right, you have cheese and butter at your restaurant. You have a Chinese restaurant. One day he'll be on a top 50 Pellegrini list. No. You don't want to be on that? that? Chinese food has just so far a way to go with getting any kind of respect from, I don't know, the world. And that's why, and that's why you're going to bring it. You might be old no, 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 by the time no. it gets there, and you know you might have a bowl growing out your face with <laughs> the white hair, but you bring it. I just try it now, right? So here for you are salt cabinet, Ooh. fermented cabbage oh, wow. turner socks, and these are our onion petals. They've been doing these little onion petals like since they opened. As I get older, I think I'm more impressed with chefs that have a sense of restraint. When you can make a bite that's like very simple, I think that to me is actually more impressive. I think those onion petals are a good example of that. The one thing I learned about being on Munchies is that I need to close my mouth while eating. Yeah, always close your mouth. I was like, holy shit. I'm like, rah, rah, rah. I, I don't open my, I don't chew my mouth open on the first three dates. After that, I'm a monster. <laughs> Here's your wang, wang. Oh, this looks good. We had a chicken wang, and then we had a piece of salmon. It's comfy and smoked salmon dish with a slow potato, beurre blanc, and sorrel. Pretty demonstrative of the sort of food that we do here. There's a lot of thought that's gone into it, and each technique has to be done properly. Otherwise, it was just dog shit, basically. I was like full at that point because just eating all the tasters at tester time, I just get crushed. I can't eat after that at all. We're gonna steal Rupert. Are you gonna come with us? Okay. I think I can stay for one more drink. Yeah! yeah. yeah. You're gonna be a Mr. Jews at 7 a.m. Your boss is gonna know what he's <laughs> <laughs> We grabbed Rupert, and after Lord Stanley, we went to Liho Liho Yacht Club. I have an app now, though. Have you seen this? Oh, that don't. It's a security camera, it's security a live camera. view. So I can see what's going on. Right yeah. now. Oh, shit, someone's yelling at <laughs> oh, A lot of joking oh, no. around, a lot of joking around right now. Fashion? Fucking bullshit. No, this is the first time, I think, yeah. I ate, I ate at your place a bunch of times. He said 18 times. 18 times. That's, that's not true. We're going to Liho Liho Yacht Club. They just opened a bar downstairs. Holy shit, it's busy here. It's hella busy here. Every day like this, every day. Liho, it's a restaurant that my friend Ravi, he's doing his version of Hawaiian food. Downstairs, they just had opened Louis' Jen Jen room. And we went there for a couple cocktails and a waffle. Did they give you a strainer for your water? He's always never really got a Cheers. Cheers. Still that beer as well. Oh, I got a cup. This is beef. We, we use pork. Yeah, pork. Oh, you pork? It's a fish palooza. They do savory waffles and some sweet ones. We only got furikake and avocado on a waffle. It was tasty. So where are we going now? Back to the restaurant. We ran into Evan and Sarah, and they're the husband and wife team at Rich Table. Yeah, look at this van, it's huge. We got them to come with us back to the restaurant. 
know what they opened up in my neighborhood at Hayes Valley? Bobo <laughs> tea? That's your fucking dream right there. That is my dream. I'll open yeah, up you and I'm fucked up. Yeah, but I'm opening my place, though. Are you? He's across street from him. I'll never leave him alone, though. You better hope he fucking blows up. <laughs> oh, shit! Holy shit balls! It's locked. Yeah. In the restaurant, I know you're gonna yell at him, okay? Oh, my God, it's oh, locked. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God, I gotta cook with so many people here. Holy shit. I better start cooking. Hello. Oh my God, there's a lot of people here. I was nervous because it was my first night away from service. Came back and it just seemed like it went okay. The restaurant didn't burn down, like it was fine. How'd tonight go, guys? I was watching you guys on my fucking security camera. Yeah. I promised myself I wouldn't do any more drunken cooking. Basically making tartar sauce. When I, when I used to go to McDonald's with my, with my grandparents, We'd only order really two things there. filet fish and chicken nuggets with sweet and sour sauce. So we're doing a tartar sauce with seaweed. We made some seaweed brioches and we're gonna fry a bunch of halibut. I was waiting for you to do your uh, beer batter with this. Yeah, I think I'm going to What the fuck? I would have done it. Yeah, you're doing it, so, yeah. We have an Aussie in the kitchen, so he whipped up a beer batter out of his back pocket and we just fried the fish. These fried chicken sandwiches are gonna go with the, the cherry sweet and sour sauce. Watch out, boy. We made some Italian favorites. Prosciutto, we always have on stock. Melons just came into season. More, more, more. More, 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 more. 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 Like okay, every, no, of... more plates. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> don't fuck it up, guys. All you guys need to do is don't fuck it up. Now it's sweet and sour chicken. All right, time to feed the people. Fill those bows. Melissa, my pastry chef, made some steamed bows and we just stuck them in there. Nick, how's your beer batter? It's all right, it's all right. I want to try this before I send it out. <laughs> we need to feed these motherfuckers. Once they got made, they got devoured. I was like, hold on, where did those go? Because I wasn't done with them and they're like, they're already consumed. I was like, fuck, okay. Hold on, where did all the food go? It was nice to see a bunch of friends, and when you first open a restaurant, you're in your bubble for, for a long time. So thank you for getting me out. <laughs>